Welcome to episode seven of Learning Fusion. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Fusion RAM cache during playback. So let's roll this intro and let's jump into it. We're learning Fusion together. We'll learn 2D stuff and 3D stuff and particle stuff and compositing stuff, deep pixel stuff and tracking stuff, but not other stuff, but some other cool stuff. Cause we're learning Fusion together. So within Fusion, anytime we uh, create a node tree, we have media and we have different things. All the image processing operations are rendered live so we can display the result within the uh, viewers. But as each one of these frames are rendered during playback, it's automatically stored in a RAM cache as they're processed. So you can replay them in uh, real time. So let's grab some media and uh, let's see what we're talking about here. So I'm going to input this media and uh, we're going to look at our media here. And as soon as I do, you notice we get this little green area under our uh, time ruler here. And if I push play, you can see it's kind of updating, but it's really not going to update its full rendered area until I hit stop. And then this green bar will show what frames have been rendered off of this uh, node. Now keep in mind, some nodes like our media in are not going to show rendered frames. But other nodes down the line will show that they have been rendered with this green line, which means Fusion has placed that in its little Fusion cache. And uh, the other day we talked about this playback. So the playback is going to be dependent on how fast that is rendering. Additionally, down here we have this little percentage with how many megabytes. And this is our RAM used. So how Fusion uses RAM, and to be able to show this, we need to go up to our DaVinci preferences and uh, under our memory right here we can limit the memory used with infusion and how it works within davinci resolve is we have our system memory and it's going to use 75 percent of that for resolve and then out of that it's going to use 75 percent of the resolve for fusion so if we bring up a uh, let me find a calculator here just to show it so I've got 63.7 gig of system memory available. So 63.7 times 0.75 equals 47.775, which is our 47.8. And then 75% of that, that Fusion is allowed to use times 0.75 equals 35.8, which is 35.8. So that's the max that DaVinci Resolve and Fusion can use. So it's going to depend on your system memory. So the more memory you have, the more Resolve can use, meaning the more Fusion can use. And the only way to adjust this is you can adjust it down, but you can't go beyond that 75%. And that's what's showing down here is that 75% of that 75% within Fusion. So as it's rendering, you see this percentage going up. That's what percentage of that 75% of 75% that is being used. So how this works is it's not going to render every single node every single time. So as an example, I'm going to bring a color corrector in and uh, let's bring in a cinematic haze because we know that is extremely uh, memory intensive. Let's go ahead and connect that into our little media out. So as soon as I do, you notice it cleared. But first of all, some nodes like this, no matter uh, whether it's rendered or not, it's going to show the fact that it's been rendered. And I'll show you here in a second. So if we go to our media out and uh, let's actually go to our corrector first. So we're going to bring our corrector up. You notice it's not rendered and let's uh, change our color so we know it's that node. If I push play, And I stop, the entire timeline has been uh, cached or rendered. Now, if I bring up a double here, let's bring that there in our media out over here. Let's even change our cinematic haze so we really know what's going on. If I look at our media out, it has not been cached, but our uh, color corrector still has. So this is display dependent as well. Meaning if I go ahead and render this forward, You may think that both of them are being cached. 
However, we're selected on our media out, so that's what's being showed. But if I select our color corrector, you can see our color corrector is still cached. So if I go down to one, you can see where it's still trying to cache. But if I bring in our color corrector, it's already cached, so it's gonna play back real time. If I switch back to our little uh, media out here, now it's got to uh, generate that cache and our playback has gone way, way, way down. Now, sometimes to speed things up, we can come down here and uh, let me move this over a little bit. If we right click on our percentage here, we can select purge cache. So if we've been working on stuff all day long and uh, you find stuff's getting slow, if you go here and just select this purge cache, you notice it just cleared everything, including our cached color corrector. So now it's got to recache all this stuff. But now if I go back and I push play, you can see it's a little bit faster on the uh, caching because we purged that cache. Now additionally, we have uh, other options, like uh, if we right click on our media out, we have this cache to disk option. So if we select that, now we just enabled that cache to disk, and uh, now it's being cached at this location. We can select that folder and change it if we want. But by default, this is going to be caching where you have your system cache set up. And if I hit OK, it's saving that cache, and uh, we know it's got a little cache save because there's a little disk icon on our node. But unfortunately, if we play this and we cached it all out, and we went to our haze node and uh, made a change, unfortunately, it's not saving that cache. So it's going to have to recache everything. It's just resaving the cache. So it's really not making anything much faster. And if I want to go here, I can go to cache to disk and I can delete that cache. So if I select delete cache, it's going to ask, Hey, we've got 42 cache files in here. Do you want to delete them? Yes, I do. Okay. Now it's been deleted. Additionally, if I right click and go to cache to disk, I can select this pre-render. So if I select pre-render, this just allows me to go ahead and pre-render everything, go make a coffee, and I'm good. But if you notice, if we bring up a double view, it's not doing anything to our other node here. It's only pre-caching what's on that little node tree. And then I can go back and just uh, select my delete. Now there's 96 cache files. So I can delete all those, hit OK, and you notice our little disk icon is gone now. And that's just a good way if something's taking you a super long time to play through and uh, you want to go grab a coffee <laughs> and pre-render that out to see what's going on, you can. And another way to uh, kind of make stuff a little faster, let's go ahead and purge our cache. If you remember right, we talked about our little playhead, and if I right-click on our little play, we can change our frames that are being rendered. So if I want to skip and only render every single eight frame, I can hit play and it's going to skip and only render every eighth frame. That way I don't have to sit here and look at every single frame. I can still kind of do my work and uh, it's a little faster. And if you notice on both of them, so on the media out every eighth frame, additionally on our color corrector, every single eight frame. And then if I want to go back and uh, render everything, I can just go back, select one, push my play button, and now it's going to render every single frame. So that's how the Fusion RAM cache works within Fusion. I will see you in the next episode.